All right, what's going on, guys? It's that time again. We're going to go through another manga timeline video, and this time, we're going to go through Gantz. Now, Gantz was a manga that came out from June 2000 to June 2013, so it had a 13-year run. It was written and illustrated by Hiroya Oku, and it focuses on two main characters, Kei Korono and Masaru Kato, as they take part in a game in which their lives are on the line. But enough introduction. Let's get started. Our story begins with Kei Korono admiring a swimsuit model in a magazine. An old lady asks Kei for directions, but he coarsely brushes her off. Kei then stands next to Kato, an old childhood friend. A drunk man then falls onto the tracks, propelling Kato to provide assistance. None of the other passengers seem interested in helping out, so Kato looks over at his old friend. Kei-chun! Is that Kei-chun? Grudgingly, Kei helps Kato lift the man onto the platform. After doing so, the two are forced to run down the tracks, as the next train is quickly approaching. Unfortunately, this train is a non-stop express, so it won't be stopping at this station. What the? Whoa! Kato! Ugh! Nasty! Damn! Serves you right, dumbass! After dying, the two are immediately transported to a room with other people. Were you boys about to die too? The two find out that everyone in this room has already died. Kay is in a cold sweat over the notion of being dead. The two notice a giant ball in the center of the room. They also realize that they are trapped within the room. The group then goes around the room, sharing their names and the method in which they died. After some idle talk, parts of a body begin materializing around Kai. The body ends up being a girl who's completely naked. Sexually aroused, Kai begins kissing the unconscious girl. He then sees that her wrists are cut. The rest of the people think it was suicide. The girl then wakes up, wondering what's going on. One of the Yakuza members looks to rape the girl, but Kato immediately steps in to prevent this from happening. The Black Sphere then starts playing music, Wilt saying, A new morning has come, a morning of hope. The group stops fighting and converges on the black ball. The ball says, Your lives have ended. How you use your new lives is entirely up to me. That's the theory anyways. The crew takes note of the backward E's and S's. Kato throws the girl his jacket, telling her to cover herself up before he gets tempted himself. The ball then instructs them to defeat the onion alien. The sphere opens up, revealing a collection of guns and a man hooked up to life support. The crew finds black suits with their names on them. Kei notices that Nishi is already wearing a black suit under his street clothes. The guns, as it turns out, only serves as x-rays. And Hadanaka begins to disappear into a random street. The rest of the people disappear as well. Kei decides to change into his black suit, but is caught by the girl completely naked. He then starts materializing into a different location but manages to grab his suit before it's too late. Nishi then reveals that his dad is the producer of a game show with the prize money of 10 million yen. The premise is that there are criminal aliens on Earth, and they've been scouted by a secret government agency to hunt them down. Essentially, instead of dying, they were all hypnotized and dragged to the same location. Yamada finds an apartment building named Onion as Kid Onion Alien opens the door. There it is! shouts Inamori. The boy says, Two is enough for me, as they wonder what's going on. The girl asks Kei and Kato what's going on. They have no idea, but the girl takes an immediate liking to Kato. Back at the apartment, Inamori decides they need to shoot the alien, but he is shocked by its bone structure. The alien spawns mucus and begins to run away. The alien jumps from the apartment all the way to Kei's location. Onions are enough! The alien continues running with the rest of the members chasing him down. Suzuki who abandoned the quote-unquote game, steps onto some glass, overjoyed that he's still alive and beat his cancer. He then steps across a line, hearing a noise that sounds like a cell phone. He doesn't seem concerned, however, but a chip in his brain explodes and kills him. Kato joins the chase for the onion alien, instructing Kei to take the girl home. Inamori corners the alien, but his ex-shotgun doesn't seem to work. A while later, however, the wall he shot completely explodes. The alien slashes Hadanaka's leg, with Kato urging everyone to stop what they are doing. Inamori says the guns are time delayed, as the alien's right arm randomly explodes. His other arms explode along with his legs. Kato excoriates the group, saying they need to call an ambulance. Blood spurts onto all the members, as they wonder if this is really a TV show. Kato laments the fact that he could not save the alien. Some of the members get grossed out by looking at the dead torso. Inamori then sees a boy who watched the whole incident. 
However, the boy can't see any of them, similar to the situation in The Sixth Sense, making them all wonder if they are really dead. A mysterious creature approaches the group, who they think is the Onion Alien's dad. Kei and the girl hear the same sound as Suzuki. Kei decides to head back to Kato, letting the girl go home on her own. The sound gets louder for the girl, as she returns to Kei. They then notice Suzuki's dead body lying on the ground. The alien dad begins to scream, as Hadanaka bashes his head into him. Unfortunately, it's solid, like concrete. The others prepare to shoot, but Hadanaka urges them to stop. The alien dad grabs his son's arm and begins to shout profusely. Inamori grows impatient, firing off his weapon. The alien dad uses Hadanaka as a shield, with his body exploding shortly afterwards. Hadanaka's blood and entrails disperse in every direction, with the alien dad squeezing down on his head with rage. The other members begin firing at the alien, as Yamada believes it's still a game show. After eliminating everyone, the alien dad stares down Kato. He lunges in, yet Yoshioka begins shooting him down with a regular gun. After knocking down the alien, he bleeds out and dies. Kato wishes he wasn't here, as the alien stands up with killer's intent. Yamada daydreams that the game was a TV show. However, when he comes to, he's missing both of his arms. The alien screams in front of Kato. With no other options, Kato takes the offensive. Yet he can't take another being's life. The alien knocks Kato down a hill. Kay and the girl walk in. What the hell is that? Kay sees his dead comrades, causing him to get extremely nervous. The two run away when the alien notices them. But Kay quickly notices that the girl is missing. The alien chases the girl down, but eventually turns his attention to Kay. Kay screams for help. Luckily, the alien gets hit by a car. The people in the car can't see Kay or the alien. The alien smashes the car and resumes the chase. After getting cornered, Kay charges the alien, but merely slides under him and continues running. Kay cries, thinking Kato is dead. Kay then jumps down a flight of stairs. Wondering how he jumps so high. After landing, the alien lands right next to him. He squeezes on Kei's head. But Kato implements a chokehold and tells Kei to run for his life. The alien knocks Kato down. RUN! Screams Kato. The alien goes for Kato. But Kei's suit transforms, giving him a boost of strength and speed. The two shout at each other, with Kei inflicting pain on the alien. The alien squeezes Kei's head in rage. But the boy eggs him on. After punching him down, he batters the alien with several punches. Surprisingly though, the alien begs for their forgiveness. The alien is then tied up by Nishi's weapon. Nishi then implores Kei to shoot the alien. Nishi says the alien deserves to die since he killed everyone else. But Kei is having reservations. Kei eventually walks away, with Nishi finishing the job. Nishi says they'll return to the room now and eventually go home. Kei worries about Kato, who looks to be dead. Kei's body is then transported to the room, with Kato's body remaining in the street. It's been a long time since anyone else has survived, says Nishi. The dog comes back along with the girl. The girl is in disbelief that Kato is dead. But just then, he returns to the room, alive and well. The Black Sphere then says it's time to share the points. Gantz is going to start handing out the points. Gantz, playfully, names the girl Tits and gives her zero points. Kato also receives zero points, along with the dog. Nishi receives three points, totaling 90 overall. Ten more, and he'll be all done. Kei Korono also receives a zero, and gets insulted by Gantz by having too many boners from staring at tits. Afterwards, Kei asks Nishi who he is, and he replies by saying he's an alien. But he was just trolling. Nishi has been coming back here for over a year now, he tells Gantz to show them everyone that's died. The bottom row shows the people they saw die tonight. Kato furiously questions Nishi as to why he didn't reveal more information before they started their mission. Nishi says he waits for the others to die, so that the alien will let down his guard and he can kill him. Kato grabs Nishi, as Nishi continues to provoke him. K points his X-gun in Nishi's face, wondering if they're alive. My guess is that... our bodies... The originals really are dead. Essentially, they are all clones. He warns them not to say anything about tonight to people of the outside world. Otherwise, their heads will explode. 
Nishi, who disappeared at this point, ends up leaving the room, with the others leaving shortly after. The three then share a taxi cab on their way home. After dropping off the girl, they ask her what her name is. My, my name is Kei Kishimoto. Kei? Same name as me. Kishimoto then answers the phone, talking to her mother. However, her mother confuses her with her younger sister and tells her that Kei is in the hospital from attempted suicide. Kishimoto rushes out the door as Kei Karano decides to go to bed. Shit, it wasn't a dream. Kei sees a news report where two boys saved a homeless man from a train and disappeared. Kei resumes his normal school life. Outside, Matsumura is bullied by Yonakura for money, but he eventually turns his attention to Kei. Kei changes into his black outfit and follows Yonakura after school. Yonakura takes him to four seniors to rough him up. Kazumi demands they return some money they took from a freshman, but the leader knees him in the face. Kei says he's not paying them anything. Tachibana then grabs Kei with killer's intent. However, Kei inflicts severe pain on his wrist with the aid of his suit. Kei walks away, feeling invincible with his cyber suit. Kei then returns home, finding Kishimoto sleeping outside his door. She returns Kei's student handbook and has some food inside his apartment. She then requests if she can live in the apartment with him. After agreeing, Kei thinks about how lucky he is. He then buys Young Jump and some condoms from the store, while Kishimoto takes a shower. The two get ready for bed, and Kei brings a condom with him. Kei asks for sex, but Kishimoto, claiming she's his pet, declines. She does, however, allow him to grope her. While this happens, Kishimoto says there was another her when she returned home. With no record of her existence, she has nowhere to return to. When Kei wakes up the next morning, he notices his burn scar is gone. Some bullies pick on a boy, but Kato shows up and scares them off. Kato is then reminded of the onion alien when he looks at the boy. Later on, one of the bullies tells Kato that the second and third years are going to jump him after school, and that one of the seniors wants his butthole. Kato walks into the bathroom, confronting the thugs. He then opens the stall with the senior taking a crap and bloodies him up. He then tells them to stop picking on the weak and walks off. Kishimoto and Kei spot the original Kishimoto out in public. Kishimoto states that she's relieved that she no longer has to live with her mother. She then states she's in love with Kato. Meanwhile, Kato is scolded by his aunt for getting in a fight at school. She leaves Kato home with his brother while she gets stakes with her own kids. Nishi says tonight Gantz will assign another mission. Kei caresses Kishimoto's tits while giving her a massage. They then transport to the room. A biker game parks in a parking lot. A father insults them, but gets beaten down. We then transition to four members of a gang who get called here. Turns out, it was a trap, and they're ambushed by a rival gang. After getting pummeled, they're all transported to the Tokyo room with Gantz. Hojo hangs out in a bookstore. He then realizes that a stalker girl, Sadako, is following him. He leaves on a bike expecting a different girl to ride with him, but Sadako jumps on at the last moment. He then threatens to throw her off on the highway, but they're soon transported to the Tokyo room. The newcomers wonder what's going on, as a child with a grandma begins to cry. Kato looks to debrief everyone, but Nishi belligerently urges him to stop. Kato continues on despite everyone's disbelief. Gantz then reveals their next assignment, killing the Tanaka alien. Everyone puts on their suits. However, Kei forgot his in his apartment. As Kishimoto gets changed, two members of the biker gang watch her. Kei panics with Nishi stating that he's a dead man walking. Kei attempts to steal one of the biker's suits, but he's caught. Kosuke then shoots Nishi in the head with the X-Gun. Or so it would appear, nothing happens. Yet Nishi takes the opportunity to blow his head apart. He threatens everyone by saying anyone who points a gun at him will die. Gantz then sends him off first. As he laughs at the notion of them cooperating together, Kei then panics. What should I do to survive without a suit? Kato assures Kei he'll protect him. Kei's head materializes on a street, nearly getting hit by a car. Kei then notices the Tanaka alien. Kishimoto hands his body an X-Gun, that is eventually transported with him. The Tanaka alien, nevertheless, walks right past him without his suit on. Kei looks to shoot him from the blind side, but one of the alien birds distracts him. 
The alien then asks him if he's Yuzo, but Kei declines. Everyone is transported to the same location, except for Kishimoto and Tetsuo. The latter then suggests that they should have some fun. The Tanaka alien then calls for Kantaro. The Tanaka alien's face changes to an angry one. The group thinks it's a joke that he's an alien. Nishi destroys one of its birds by mistake, leading the alien to engage him in battle. The alien destroys Nishi's invisibility device, leaving him vulnerable. Nishi then loses his gun in the scuffle, but he punches the alien in the face. However, Nishi's suit begins to malfunction, forcing him to call for help. The bikers laugh at him, but Kato determines they need his expertise, so he jumps into the water. Nishi is badly hurt, but he urges Kato to kill the alien. The bikers heckle Kato, but Kishimoto begs for someone to help him. The others leave as Kei says he'll go in. Kato grabs Nishi, who seems to be barely hanging on. Kato runs super fast, but Nishi tells him to slow down. The alien attacks, with Kei lining up a shot, but he misses. The alien takes Kato underwater, but Kato returns with the alien in his grip. The bikers then walk near the edge of the gaming area, with Kinji's head exploding. Kato squeezes tightly on the alien. The alien then screams in desperation, with a bird-like alien emerging through its head. K presses a button on his restrainer gun that sends the alien up. The group checks in on Nishi, who's in severe pain. They wonder why they're not sent back to the Tokyo room, but they find out that on Hojo's locator, that there's one more alien. Nishi calls for his mama as he fades away. Is there any way for us to be free? Yells Kado. Nishi says a hundred points would have set him free as he perishes. The group is thrown into chaos, but Kado asks for their help in capturing the Tanaka alien. The group needs to finish their mission in the allotted time or they'll die. Kei stays behind since he doesn't have his suit, but he's held up by the guys from the biker gang. After they beat him up and take his gun, Kei runs and grabs the X gun from the ground. They take him hostage anyway. One of the birds transforms into the Tanaka alien as another one descends to the ground. Kato grabs one as four more fly in. Kishimoto aims her gun at one, but is pushed back. After squeezing the bird out of the one, Kato punches it down. The four others approach Kato, as it looks like his suit is malfunctioning as well. Kishimoto blasts one of the aliens apart. Hojo then grabs one from behind and crushes it with his bare grip. Two aliens approach Ryota and his grandma. Ryota, under the instructions of his grandma, escapes, but he comes back to check in on her. However, the Tanaka aliens have already killed her, or nearly killed her. She grabs onto her grandson as the aliens look to blast the two. The two bikers take Kei to an abandoned building, telling him to search for the alien. Kei goes to the second floor and is soon surrounded by four Tanaka aliens as he spots a bird-like creature sitting down. I... am I going to... die? The Tanaka aliens all repeat the name Yuzo. The birds begin nipping at his neck, with him squeezing one. The giant bird looks towards Kei. He then emerges from the room and towers over him. Kishimoto tells Kato to stay put as she and Hojo go to the garage with the boy and his grandma. The two enter and fire their guns. After a time delay, the aliens explode. However, they determine that the boy and the grandmother are already dead. Kei pulls out his gun as the bird boss angrily stares at him. I'm not gonna die, repeats Kei. He fires a direct shot, but the bird swivels its head at the last moment. The bird shrieks incessantly. Kei shoots his X-gun in several directions, eventually falling through the floor. Kei begins running as the building collapses to the ground. Took you down, bitches! All at once, that's right! Everyone gathers together thinking it's over. The bird boss then grabs Numada, dropping him from the sky shortly afterward. The bird boss lands on the ground. He screams when he sees Kei. Hojo attempts to fire, but is knocked back. The bird grabs Kei and flies into the air. Jesus Christ! Kei fires off a round, but the bird dodges it. Kei then pulls on the alien's respirator, causing a plume of smoke to emit into the sky. The bird drops Kei, which allows him to fire the finishing blow. Kei falls onto a roof, getting shaken up a little bit, but he's okay. The five survivors, along with the dog, teleport to the Tokyo room. The dog receives zero points. Tits gets 10 points for killing two aliens. Kato gets five points. Sadako, the stalker, gets zero points. And Homo, otherwise known as Hojo, gets 10 points. 
Tetsuo gets 0 points, and Bitch, otherwise known as K, gets 38 points. The group leaves the room, with Kishimoto asking Kado if he lives alone. He says no, and she drops the matter. Kishimoto continues talking about Kado, which irritates the hell out of K. Kishimoto apologizes for being a bother, and leaves K's apartment. K chases after her, but to no avail. K then meets a new girl in his class, but she already has a boyfriend. At home, K reminisces about his time killing aliens, saying he wants to go back. Tetsuo has sex with his wife. She eventually finds his ex-gun, but he says it's just a toy. Tetsuo then tests the gun on various objects outside. He then calls his debt collector, Mr. Iwaki, to blow his head off. Tetsuo then approaches a rival motorcycle gang. However, the trigger on the gun won't work. The bomb inside his head kills him, as the bikers mock his stupidity. K is pissed that Kishimoto left him. Kato takes his little brother to their new apartment, that they'll move into next week. K's ears begin to ring. Yes! Here we go! K is then taken a crap whilst Gantz transports him to the Tokyo room. K doesn't recognize anyone, but eventually Kato materializes, along with Hojo and Kishimoto. A Buddhist claims that this is a testing place for after death. Kato clarifies by saying they're about to engage in a hunt. K steps away from the group, meeting a new girl in the hallway. Gantz plays the usual song, A new morning has come, a new morning of hope. The girl says K was kind of cute when he was just crying right now. Let me have sex with you. Are you retarded? Okay, want to do it now? The next mission involves catching the rowdy and grumpy alien. The girl and K stop what they're doing as everyone grabs their guns. The monk berates everyone as K begins banging the girl. However, while doing so, he thinks of Kishimoto. Kishimoto then walks in on the two. The two continue nevertheless, putting on their suit shortly afterwards. Kato says they need to convince everyone to put on their suits, so they don't die. He starts threatening them as the group begins to transport. The martial artist kicks Kato, but to no avail. The monk is left alone, causing him to panic, just before he is transported. One of the members walks outside the perimeter, and his head explodes. Kato then warns everyone else not to stray too far. He then blows the doors to the temple open, causing the alien statue to look towards the explosion. Kiyoshi wonders if the statues are the aliens. Kishimoto suggests that they use the x-ray on their guns to find out. And sure enough, they're the aliens. Kato looks to use his capture gun, but the other alien burst out. The other one follows suit, leaving everyone to panic. The group flees for their lives, but the aliens knock them down with a gust of wind. Kato looks to shoot, but is kicked through the air. The monk chants prayers to the aliens, but the aliens swat him like a bug. Kato is trembling with fear. Can we actually beat these things? K rushes in, slides underneath it, and blows off its foot. The alien goes on a rampage as K pulls out two guns and blasts its arms off. K points the gun at the alien's head. Kato urges him to cease the killing, but K pulls the trigger. Kato then sees an overlapping of Nishi on top of K, thinking K is going down a dark path. I'm a hero! Nothing can stop me, says K, as he rushes into the second one. The alien uses a gust of wind to knock them all over. K punches a hole in the cement to prevent himself from getting blown over. K holds back the alien, allowing Juzo to use a sniper to blow off its head. The alien collapses and the group recognizes K's skill. Kato, however, gives a disapproving look to K. K and Sai talk, agreeing to go out with each other after this is all over. Tomoshiro then notices another Buddha alien on the roof of the building. The alien thrusts its spear at Yuta. Yuta then headbutts the alien. A cavalcade of adversaries then appears, just as a massive Buddha emerges from the building. I'll kill it! That thing is mine! K charges in, but is overwhelmed by its sheer size. After shooting the foot, he gets kicked through the air. A random citizen enters the temple, seeing it in shambles. However, he can't see any of the aliens or the people. Kato suggests they work together, but K is resistant, saying he can take it down by himself. The group fends off the hordes of aliens. The Buddha's foot is about to crush the random citizen, who can't see anything. So Kato rushes in. The group of four prevent the man from being crushed. The man eventually walks away, but Kato, Kishimoto, Hojo, and Sadio get crushed. They're still alive though. K shoots at the Buddha, but he retaliates. The Buddha then gets pissed, 
Okazaki tortures a Buddha alien as the massive Buddha chases K down. After he gets caught, Kato and the others shoot at the Buddha's foot. K escapes from the Buddha's hand. Okazaki is then caught. Kato leaps in, yet the Buddha bites Okazaki's head off. K angrily charges in once again, leaping into the Buddha's forehead. Injured, the Buddha collapses to the ground. K emerges from its mouth. I entered through here, then I shot it from inside. Hojo says there's still two aliens left, with 30 minutes to go. They surround a praying alien. The martial artist approaches another alien, throwing a punch that is caught. After his attacks fail, he tackles the alien. A different alien snaps his neck, however, with a kick. Hojo urges everyone to run. Kado catches the other alien's leg. As it levitates, Juzo the sniper takes him down with his X-gun. As Hojo panics, Sadio's shot hits flush. Tomoshiro and Yuta escape as the Buddha alien boss steps down from its pedestal. Kado and the group arrive. However, they find Hojo and Sadio kissing. Except they're missing their lower halves. Kado screams in frustration. He manages to shoot the Buddha boss, but it quickly heals itself and retaliates. Kishimoto uses her body as a shield, causing Kei to lash out with extreme fury. I love you, Kado, says Kishimoto. Kado cries as Sai rushes in. Kei shoots his X-gun with rage as Sai fights off the others. The alien heals itself and removes Kei's left leg. The alien then slices off Kei's right arm as he thinks of Kishimoto. Sai asks Kado what they should do now. The two decide to regroup as Kado kisses Kishimoto. The two leave with Kei as Kado takes one last look at Kishimoto. Severely hurt, Kei tells Kado to kill him. Instead, however, Kado shoots his X-gun at Kei's leg to stop the bleeding. Kado leaves as Tomoshiro and Yuta have their arms taken off by the alien. The sniper shoots the alien, but he regenerates. He then blows apart its body completely. The healing device allows the alien to regenerate as he shoots his laters at Juzo. Tomoshiro and Yuta are cut up, with Kato returning to retrieve Kishimoto's gun. Kato begins fighting one of the aliens. Kei says he only wanted to be with Sai, so he could have sex with her. The alien appears. Sai wonders if defeating the alien will make Kei like her. She does well to dodge the alien's sword thrust. She then kicks the alien's corrosive material on him, causing him severe pain. Korono! I won! She looks to shoot, but a laser gashes into her. She then perishes as the alien walks off. Juzo attacks the other alien with a spear. He puts in a chokehold, yet the alien is able to slice off his legs. Everyone looks defeated as Kato is strangled. He rips the alien's arms off and punches him. Kato returns to Sai, shocked beyond belief by what he's seeing. Kato determines that Kei is still holding on, but just barely. Kato leaves with his sword and is approached by the alien. It then kills Kudo. Kato looks to shoot, but it turns out that Kudo's voice and memories were transported to the alien. He revels in his new strength as Kato looks to survive. Kato eventually captures him and aims to send him away, but he separates his head from his body and grows a new version of himself. Here comes the real thing! Kato takes several punches from the alien as he thinks of his brother. I'll make meat sauce out of you. Kato retaliates with a punch to the jaw, knocking the alien's glasses off. The alien takes the upper hand though. I'm going to eat your brains out. Kato then thinks of a time when him and Kei were just kids, and the fact that he had a loser's mentality, and that he'll need to change it if he wants to win here and now. The alien attacks, but Kato grabs his sword, and with full conviction, slices his head clean off. Unfortunately, the alien uses the last of its strength to use its tail as a weapon to impale Kato straight through the chest. Kato begins to bleed out as his little brother goes to their apartment looking for him. I beg of you. God, I beg of you. Kei returns to the Tokyo room, thinking everyone else is dead. Kei receives 8 points for the mission, totaling 46. Why is there no one here? Kei begins crying profusely, but then he remembers the words of Nishi and decides to check the bottom row. Unfortunately, he sees all of his friends on it. He then threatens Gantz to bring him back. And with this, he's forced to leave the Tokyo room, step into the rain, 
and sulk without his friends. All dead. A news report presumes that terrorists destroyed the temple. K runs into the other Kishimoto, professing his love to her. Freaked out, she runs away. K chases her down nonetheless, and says another girl, just like her, died recently. A new student, Aizumi, enters K's class. After showing him around, Aizumi reminds K of Kado. K is directed to pay 50,000 yen by some school thugs. After refusing, they attack him. However, with the Gant suit on, he withstands the attack and walks away. Aizumi then asks K about the black ball room. K declines, knowing that if he says something, his head will explode. Do you know about Gantz? K still declines, but allows Aizumi to come to his place. Aizumi goes on the computer and pulls up the Gantz website. Aizumi begins piecing together all the clues, eventually asking K to show him his suit. K panics, but Aizumi drops the matter and leaves. K is then transported to the Tokyo room with a new assignment that he'll do on his own with no one else. K is transported onto a building, but he is sweating profusely. He sees the alien he's supposed to capture on another building, so he jumps across. The alien jumps down to confront K, but the alien's speed is lightning quick. K jumps to another building, and when the alien follows, he prepares his next shot. K takes the alien's torso and left arm with his gun, causing him to crash into the ground. K then acts smug, but remembers Kato's advice. During K's inner turmoil, the alien passes away. However, a group of similar aliens then approach. They want retribution for their dead ally. The group beats down K with a barrage of attacks. After falling down, they grab K's arms, intending to rip them off. The aliens rip off the arms of the suit as K runs away for his life. He jumps across to another building, grabs his gun, and splatters the majority of them. However, one still remains. The alien uses telepathy to let K know he won't fall for any of his tricks. The alien sneaks up on K, kicks him in the stomach, and steals his guns. K runs for his life, not even attempting to kill the alien at this point. According to the timer on Gantz, his mission is almost done. And when the time hits zero, he is transported back to the room. However, he loses all 46 of his points and is back at zero once again. K silently panics while playing a board game in school. Due to a rule that the other guys made up, he has to ask a girl out in class. Things go well with the girl, but K hears a voice in his head, saying he's been found. A boy enters the classroom with bloodstains on his clothing, implying he's the alien in disguise. K leaves the classroom as the alien begins killing everyone. The classroom is in a disarray, with Aizumi fighting the alien. Aizumi determines he's not human as the two go back and forth. Eventually, Aizumi knocks him off his feet, revealing the alien inside. The alien punches through a desk and knocks Aizumi into the air. The school begins evacuating as K observes the bloody carnage. I am merely here to enact justice, says the alien. K wonders if he's the bad guy as the police intervene. Everyone's dead except for the girl. The alien attacks the cops. K takes the girl to the roof, only to be confronted by the alien once more. K realizes he can't use his gun in front of the girl, so he grabs her as the alien attacks. The SWAT team enters the premises. K and the girl go flying off the roof, landing on the ground with the protection of K's suit. The SWAT team surrounds the alien. The alien knocks out several men, but is eventually shot multiple times by the gunman. The alien is full of bullet holes, so an officer checks in. Despite all the damage, he still lives. The alien tears through the officers, setting his sights on the girl. K uses the opportunity to shoot the alien from behind the statue, which makes the alien explode. K then worries if someone saw him use his gun. The next day, he attends class with Tai, the girl, and Aizumi. Things continue progressing with Tai, to the point where the two are sleeping together. Yet K wonders how it got to this point. K investigates the Gantz website, which was made by Nishi, to discover if there's any clues on how to survive. K notices that it makes several references to the end of the world. We then transition to Hiroto, who attempts to strangle himself to death. After backing out, he has some coffee with Mr. Sakata. Mr. Sakata urges him to live on as he levitates the coffee in midair. He then increases Hiroto's heart rate, causing him pain. Each time he uses his powers, his nose bleeds. He then levitates Hiroto in the air. Mr. Sakata says he'll give Hiroto his powers, which will allow him to kill the bullies at school. 
Mr. Sakata gives Hiroto training exercises and says he's already transferred his powers to him. Hiroto manipulates the flame of a lighter around his finger. He then manipulates dust particles through his hand. He calls Mr. Sakata to tell him of his accomplishments. Hiroto continues practicing, exploding an eraser with his powers. Hiroto then tells someone on a message board that he'll kill the bullies at school and won't be caught. At school, the bullies take Hiroto to the bathroom, telling him to suck another man's cock, who's actually a gym teacher. After they belligerently tell him to suck, Hiroto bursts a blood vessel in one of the bullies' brains. Mr. Nagayo's penis begins to bleed uncontrollably. After taking out the others, Hiroto is pummeled by Oda. However, when he gets an opening, he crushes the bully's heart. Hiroto's teacher says the police have some questions for him after the incident. The investigator questions Hiroto about the incident in extensive detail. He ends by asking Hiroto if he wanted to kill them. If I had been the one to kill them, then they won't be able to bully me anymore. Hiroto leaves, with the officer staring him down. Tankotsu, the person from the message board, wants to meet with Hiroto, which they do. A muscular man named Kaze walks through Tokyo. Kaze approaches some gangsters, challenging their strongest member. They call in reinforcements, but it makes no difference. Kaze then challenges the toughest person at the high school, confronting him in the bathroom. After winning, Kaze goes outside a gym to wait for the world champion in boxing. The two begin brawling with Kaze winning easily. Kei is then escorted by school bullies outside to fight Kaze for them. Tai urges Kei to leave, but he assures her he'll be fine. Kaze lands a solid punch with Kei missing several times. After getting knocked back, Kei tackles the hulking man, winning the fight. Afterwards, Kaze dubs Kei the master. Kei finds out another girl likes him, and Aizumi suggests they get to know each other through texting. The girl sends Kei a pic of her cleavage, saying they should go to Disneyland. While on the roof of the school, Aizumi instructs Kei to witness this horrible reality. Aizumi proceeds to ask Tai on a date to Disneyland, but she doesn't oblige, suggesting to Aizumi that Kei is changing for the better. Kei has a nightmare that Tai never existed, making him realize he needs to survive for her sake. Aizumi calls Kei to school late at night. Aizumi confesses that he knows of the black ball, and he has memories from a previous hunt. Kei suggests that they go to the hospital, but Aizumi shoots him. Thanks to Kei's suit, he wasn't injured. Aizumi envies Kei, but Kei says that normal people envy Aizumi. Aizumi has no interest in girls, except for Tai. He shows Kei a small black ball that says, I need you to bring as many people as possible. Aizumi wants to return to the room. He shoots Kei, urging him to use his gun. Aizumi continues provoking Kei to kill him, so he can return to Gantz. Tai interviews Aizumi the next morning with Kei. Afterwards, Aizumi paints his face to look like a black man. While on the bus, Aizumi says he'll show someone something cool. Hiroto and Tankotsuku meet Sakata in a public place. Kei worries that Aizumi is going to kill some other people. Kei then talks to Tai on the phone, panicking that she's in Shinjuku. Kei's phone dies, propelling him to put on his suit in a panic. Aizumi pulls out a gun in public, breathing heavily and nervously. He eventually pulls the trigger, killing a middle-aged man. Aizumi thusly begins a shooting spree, using a rapid-fire gun to mow down people. Kei panics on the bus, thinking of Tai's safety. Meanwhile, more and more people are being killed by Aizumi as he sets his sights on Tai. Tai is knocked down in the crowd, thinking of the events at school not too long ago. She thinks of Kurono constantly. She then grabs a baby whose mother is dead. Kaze uses a dead body as a shield against the bullets. Kaze then utilizes a throwing technique to send Aizumi flying into the garbage. Aizumi pulls out another gun, but is punched in the face. Aizumi hits Kaze with bullets, but the hulking man squeezes on his neck. Kaze looks in control, but Aizumi shoots his legs, leaving them dismembered. Aizumi then blows a hole through his head. Everyone starts running again. Meanwhile, Tankotsuku falls down, telling the other two to go ahead. Hiroto asks Sakata if he can dodge bullets. Do I look like a guy from the Matrix or something? Hiroto convinces Sakata that they have to try and stop the murderer, since they're murderers themselves. A bullet comes towards Hiroto, yet Sakata catches it with his bare hand. Sakata stops a barrage of bullets, claiming he'll kill Aizumi. More bullets come, yet the master is at his limits, resulting in his death. Hiroto trembles in fear, rushing in with complete rage. He disarms Aizumi and pushes him through the air. Aizumi pulls out a pistol from his bag, shooting Hiroto. Before finishing the job, Aizumi is sent flying through the air by Hiroto. Despite this, however, Aizumi still shoots him down. Kei panics, wondering what he should do. 
He makes his way through the sea of dead bodies, constantly thinking of Tai's well-being. Meanwhile, Aizumi takes off his disguise, hiding it in a bathroom ceiling. Kay narrowly misses Tai as she walks away with Aizumi. Aizumi says he'll look for Tai's friend, as she sits down and rests with the baby. Aizumi then drugs Tai, sending a pic to Kay shortly afterwards. Kay rushes over in a panic. Aizumi tells Kay to open his shirt. Aizumi then proclaims they'll partake in a duel. After the countdown, Aizumi shoots Kay in the chest, thinking he's won. Kay, however, locks onto Aizumi with his X-Gun and blows him apart just before he kills Tai. Just before dying, Aizumi is transported to the Tokyo room, causing him to celebrate. A mysterious panda grabs him. Kay arrives in the room too, rushing over to grab Aizumi. Aizumi easily knocks him down though. Aizumi then recalls that he previously collected 100 points while in the Gantz room. He also recalls some of his teammates from the past. Gantz reveals their next mission, catching the Cappy alien. Aizumi enters a door as Kay wakes up as almost everyone else is gone. Gantz has a message. If you don't get at least 15 points, you're a dead man. No one else wore their suits except for Aizumi. Heads begin to explode as they leave the perimeter. Kay then arrives on a peculiar looking bike. Meanwhile, Aizumi finds the Triceratops alien. Raika, an actress slash model, follows Kay, but he tells her it'd be safer if she waits outside. All the others wonder what's going on. As the Triceratops charges Aizumi, Suzuki, an older man, asks Kay if he's got a girlfriend as a dinosaur alien leaps forward. It bites down on Suzuki and whacks Kay with its tail. Meanwhile, Aizumi is struggling with the Triceratops. Kay blows the head off of the T-Rex as Aizumi slices off the horn of the Triceratops. The Triceratops stands on its hind legs, saying New World Order and that there's still two more. The dino kicks Aizumi down and pins him against the ground. Despite the gravity of the situation, Aizumi is thrilled beyond belief. Aizumi pulls out a longsword as the Triceratops charges in with Killer's intent. Aizumi extends the Gantz sword upward, slicing the alien in half when he gets within range. Tatsumi catches their target as Kei and Suzuki discover a Brachiosaurus. Tatsumi punches the alien, but is eventually surrounded by four dinosaurs. Suzuki urges Kei not to shoot since it's a grass eater, but he blows up the head regardless. One of the others sees Tatsumi get eaten as the alien points at them. The man and his family begin to flee as the dinosaurs surround the group. Kei says he accidentally killed the Brachiosaurus as Kaze, Hiroto, and Sakata look poised to enter the fray. Hiroto and Sakata destroy the raptor hearts. The Brachiosaurus without a head says, Stupid humans, fear me, and then attacks. Meanwhile, Aizumi takes down a dino and hits its right chest with the help of Sakata. The old man grabs the Brachiosaurus by the tail. The family attempts to escape, but is cut off. While in the dinosaur's mouth, a car hits them. Of course, the pedestrians can't see them. Suzuki tosses the alien, with Kei shooting it down. The dino still attacks him with its tail. Meanwhile, Hiroto takes down the last raptor. Kei discovers the weak spot of the dinos, and thusly blows it to pieces. The panda following Aizumi begins to jump at him in a playful manner. Two Triceratops intervene as a T-Rex converges in. The Triceratops and T-Rex attack each other, with the T-Rex landing the final blow as it breathes a ball of fire. Kei and Suzuki flee the area as the T-Rex follows them. Kei reaches the Gantz bike, telling Suzuki to come with him. The two make their escape, coming across the family. Kaze looks to attack the T-Rex, but he hides in the shelter with the others. Suzuki remarks that if he follows Kei, he feels like he'll survive this ordeal. The two T-Rexes fight over Raika, the model, but drop her onto the ground. Her suit malfunctions, but Kei and Suzuki intervene, blowing off the jaw of one of the dinos. The two evade the dinosaurs as the massive blast nearly hits them. Sakata tells Hiroto they must survive this game. Kei notices there's only 25 minutes left, and he still doesn't have 15 points. Suzuki drives away from a crowd of people as Kei destroys the head of the T-Rex. The blast, however, knocks him off of the bike. A T-Rex bears down on Kei. Meanwhile, Tai thinks of Kei, worrying about his safety. Raika worries about Kei, saying he saved her life by telling her to wear the suit. Kei then screams, I'm immortal! I can't lose! Kei blows up the dinosaur's mouth. He continues evading, blowing the T-Rex to bits. Corono! yells Raika. The T-Rex sends a blast at Kei, but he jumps on the bike to avoid it. Everyone cheers on Kei for his accomplishment. Who, who are you? 
asks Sakata. I'll tell you everything that I know, responds Kei. Izumi thinks he's the last one left. He thusly proclaims that he'll find the dinosaur boss now. A massive dinosaur approaches Izumi. Kei is promoted to leader of the group, as the copy alien instructs the dinos to attack them. Raptors begin attacking, with Sakata and Hirodu using their special abilities. Kaze joins the fray, as Kei wonders what Kata would do in this situation. Kei gives the group instructions, telling the old man to cover him. Hordes of dinosaurs attack as Izumi battles with the dinosaur boss. After destroying the dinosaurs, the group embraces Kei. The copy alien transforms into a hulking monster. Sean Lewis punches the alien, but breaks his fist in the process. Izumi struggles with his opponent as Kaze confronts the copy alien. The dinosaur boss then emerges, with Izumi running away. Izumi then wonders who killed all the aliens, as police walk onto the scene. Of course, they can't see anything. The dino boss cuts the officers in half. The dino boss is seeking retribution for his dead children. Kei takes blame for the dead dinosaurs, as the dino boss starts chasing him down. Kaze lands critical blows on the copy alien, knocking him out. The copy alien grows to a massive size, but is sliced in half by Izumi. Suzuki urges Izumi to save Kei. Kei realizes that if the time runs to zero, he'll lose all his points, and it will be over. Kei runs into a crowd of people, as Suzuki and Izumi track him down. Kei then reminisces about his past. He recalls asking his parents to live on his own. In short, he hated his family. But with Tai, he has a reason to live. Izumi arrives on the scene, as Kei discovers the dinosaur's weak spot. Tai finds Kei's suit and begins to nuzzle it, saying she wants to see him again. Izumi dodges the dinosaur's swift attacks, yet is injured in the process. Kei thinks of Tai as he sees the multiple eyes of the dinosaur on its belly. Kurono dodges the attack as Suzuki grabs the tail. With the dinosaur stopped, Kei prepares for his final attack. Suzuki is sent flying back as Kei knocks the dinosaur over with his X-Gun. Afterwards, Kei walks past Raika to help Suzuki up. Kei and Suzuki awkwardly embrace each other. After the fight, Raika marvels at Kei's amazing feats. The group reconvenes as they slowly get transported to the Tokyo Room. Just then, four men dressed in black arrive on the scene. They start killing everyone and prepare to off Suzuki. But Izumi saves him. The blonde-haired one recognizes Izumi as they engage each other. Izumi is then transported back to the Tokyo Room, with Suzuki being left behind. One of the members drinks some blood as Suzuki fights against the odds. He's cut down, having a vision of his late wife. She says goodbye to him as he reawakens in the Gantz Room. Kei cries in joy that Suzuki is still alive. And now, time for the points. Sakata gets 11 points. Raika, i.e. Kurono's number one fan, gets zero points, and gets quite embarrassed in the process. Kaze gets five points, Hiroto nine, Suzuki five, Hoi Hoi zero, Ainaba zero, Izumi 16, and Kei 58. Upon hearing this, Izumi becomes enraged. Kei says they should gather info between missions so they can survive the next one. Kei then rushes out to find Tai, as they embrace when they finally meet each other. In school, Kei is called a daytime lantern by his classmates, since a lantern in the daytime is useless. After school, Kei trains with his suit in the city. Later on, everyone from the Gantz room, except for Izumi, arrives at Kei's place. We then see Akira Kurono, Kei's brother, with a woman. Akira has strange marks on his back, but he brushes it off. Akira has constant headaches and finds out that he's infected with nanomachines that require him to consume blood. Otherwise, he'll experience the headaches and the rash on his back. Thusly, people who have this affliction are dubbed vampires. The Gantz players are recognized enemies of the vampire organization, as they call them vampire hunters. The vampires from the dinosaur mission feed Akira. He then wonders if he's being watched over by a devil, as he meets Kei at the train station. Despite this, he walks away. The public begins to suspect terrorist attacks for all the unexplained devastation in the city. Tai begins questioning Kei about the black suit, as Izumi interrupts. Izumi tells Kei not to report his actions to the police. Otherwise, there will be consequences. While Izumi and Kei walk their girlfriends in public, a vampire recognizes Izumi. A group of vampires then surround the four. They threaten Izumi by scaring his girlfriend, but he uses a device on his Gantz suit to disappear. While invisible, Izumi begins slaughtering the vampires. Kei escorts the girls through the dead bodies, as Izumi is finally caught. 
His suit is damaged, yet that doesn't stop him from killing more vampires. Finally, only Saito remains. Saito cuts his hair and the bag off of his shoulder. The two go back and forth for a while, until Aizumi cuts off Saito's arms. Aizumi then finishes the job, as Kei watches on in distress. Later on, Tai gives Kei oral sex, as Kei notices Raika on the TV. Raika expresses interest in a boy that is presumed to be Kei. At school, some boys question Kei as to why he's dating Tai. Tai and Kei meet after school, with Kei noticing a billboard with Raika on it. At home, Kei receives a phone call from Raika. She invites him to Shinjuku, with the two catching a movie afterwards. Kei wonders why he's doing this since he's already got a girlfriend. After the movie, Raika asks Kei if he has a girlfriend, but he doesn't say anything. So therefore, Raika asks him out again on another date. He meekly says yes, but he immediately regrets it. The next day, Kei and Tai walk past men in suits, with Kei getting worried. However, they don't attack. Kei then wonders if he's putting Tai in danger, and he thusly wonders if he should break it off with her for her own protection. Tai worries that Kei might be taken from her. After seeing the magazine, Tai calls Kei in tears. The next morning, Tai disappears, with Kei missing her greatly. Eventually though, he sees her in the hallway at school, yet she runs away from him. One night, Kei realizes it's time for another mission. The Gantz players from the previous mission are there, along with some new faces. Their new mission is to kill the ring alien. After transporting, they quickly come across eight ring aliens that are massive in size. Under Kei's instructions, they systematically take the aliens down. Just then, however, Kei sees Tai taking pictures. He wants to touch her, but she can't see him. Just then, he tackles her so she doesn't get decapitated by the alien. Though she can't see him, by touching his face, she recognizes that it's Kei. Kurono furiously takes down the remaining aliens, aiming to protect Tai. Raika then determines that this girl is Kei's girlfriend. The group returns to the Tokyo room. Gan starts handing out the points, as Ayaka speaks to Raika privately. She says the new players in the room were raping her just before she died in a car accident. With 20 more points to his total, Kei is 22 points away from being all done. The group attempts to leave the room afterwards, but the door won't open. Gant announces a new mission. Killing Tai Kojima. We have to kill her? Kill a human? Kurono, what are you thinking about? Kei begs Gantz to send him first. After transporting, he immediately starts running to find her, as the others wonder where he is. Izumi reveals that Tai is Kei's girlfriend, as he leads the group in the mission. Kurono is the enemy! Kill him first! The group finds Tai's place, with Kei waiting inside with his X-Gun. Izumi extends his Gantz sword into the house, with Kei instructing Tai to run up the stairs. Kei jumps out of the house with Tai. Raika and Suzuki implore him to run away. Aizumi says they need to clear this mission, but they say their points will only go to zero if they fail. The battle lines are drawn. Aizumi attacks Sakata, with all hell breaking loose. Kei tells Tai that he died once, and he has since gone on numerous strange hunts. And this time, she's the target. Meanwhile, Sakata and Hirota plan on taking down Aizumi. Aizumi slices at them, as the battle intensifies. Suzuki is then cornered by three Gans players, but their X-Guns don't work. Ayaka looks to exact revenge on her assailant. Sakata then determines that the suits nullify the X-Guns. However, they begin to malfunction. Aizumi slices Sakata across the chest, though he used his powers to lessen the blow. Aizumi threatens Hiroto before running off. The three thugs beat down Suzuki and blow off his legs. Ainaba questions Kaze as to why he's protecting Kurono, as Ayaka has her gun taken away from her. Kei uses his cloaking device as the Gantz players with Aizumi find Tai. They get ready to shoot, but Kei intervenes. Sorry for letting you get scared. They start running, yet Aizumi blocks their exit. Aizumi attempts to reason with Kei, but loses his patience. The two go back and forth, but eventually Raika sneaks up from Aizumi's rear. Aizumi slaps down Raika. Kei then shoots Aizumi with his X gun and hands Tai over to Raika. Hiya! Raika and Tai escape with Kurono surrounded by the five Gantz players. The others say that Iwama is dead, and Kei begins to panic, since this is the first time he's killed a human. The group point their X guns at Kei, but he jumps onto a nearby roof. Raika and Tai enter a cab, as Kaze ties off Suzuki's legs to stop the bleeding. Kei desperately runs away from the others. Tai tells Raika that she accidentally took a picture of the people dressed in the black suits. Where is that film? says Raika. Tai tells her the location. Raika then exits the cab to retrieve it. 
Kay is worn out from being chased. They all fire their guns, yet Kay rolls around to dodge them. Rika grabs the film and crushes it with her hands. Despite this, they don't transfer back to the Tokyo room. Kay is cornered once again, yet he destroys the legs of Ryotaro. Ainaba proceeds to punch Kay in rage. Stop it! Yells Tai. Aizumi jumps from a roof and slashes Tai across the back. Kay and Tai cry as they fall into each other. Aizumi viciously looks for the fatal blow, but just then, Tai is transferred away. Kay wakes up from what seems to be a dream to a naked Tai. Thank you for everything until now. I was happy. Kay wakes up for real this time, in the Gantz room. Aizumi receives 30 points for the mission. Unable to accept Tai's death, Kay points his X-gun at his own face. He then asks Gantz what happens when someone receives 100 points. Number 1. You will be freed along with your memories erased. Number 2. You will be given an extremely powerful weapon. And number 3. You will be able to revive a human being from the memory. Kei checks the memory to see the faces of Tai, Kato, and Kishimoto. Tai's mother sends Kei a portrait that Tai drew of him. Kei cries profusely, saying he'll revive all his friends. Kei then goes to the Tokyo room, screaming to Gantz to let him in. After returning home, he sees Raika coming down the stairs. The boy mutters a few words, with Raika whispering that she loves him. Hiroto tells Tankotsu that he feels like a monster since he killed his bullies. Since he feels this way, Tankotsu tells him to use his powers to save lives. They thusly begin investigating a phantom murder incident, but get no leads. Later on, while talking to Hiroto on the phone, the phantom killer stalks Tankotsu. The girl drops a hint that she's being followed, so Hiroto looks for her. Stop right there, says the man. As he ponders the way in which he'll kill her, Hiroto intervenes. The killer lunges in, but the Gansu protects Hiroto. Disgusted with the man's strange proclivities, Hiroto uses his power to several several nerves in his spinal cord. Takashi, a small boy, eats some pudding in the fridge. His mother's abusive boyfriend begins to beat him down, saying it was his. The two adults leave for karaoke, as the boy draws a picture of Muscle Rider to save him. He's then transported to the Gantz room, thinking Kaze is the Muscle Rider. Kaze is getting changed in the hallway, as Takashi calls him the Muscle Rider. K is 22 points away from saving Tai. The next mission involves catching the Oni alien. At first, Takashi doesn't want to put on his suit, but when Kaze instructs him to do so, he agrees. However, he transports before he can do so. K instructs the members to split up into two groups. Raika attempts to find the alien with her tracking device. A mysterious man can see them, and Raika assumes that he's the alien. The man runs away, but they eventually surround him. Shoot already! The man's body begins to transform. He knocks over several people, but Raika lands a salad shot with her X-gun. She blows off his upper half, yet his torso runs away. Raika gives chase, with multiple similar creatures emerging. They've been tracking the Gantz players all this time. We then see the others surrounded by the same creatures. Just then, the vampires arrive on the scene. One of the vampires demands to know where the Gantz player's boss is, and Ainaba claims to be the boss. Kaze saves Takashi, as Raika eradicates a plethora of the Oni aliens. Everyone continues decimating the aliens, as Kei claims they'll all attain 100 points after this mission. Sakata tells Hiroto that his organs have aged like an old man, on account of using his powers all the time. The fire Oni alien approaches the two, excited for an interesting battle. While watching Kei fight, Suzuki feels as though Kei carries the genuine light in this world. The Oni alien tosses a giant fireball. He then sets Hiroto ablaze. I can't breathe! Tankotsu remembers a conversation she had with Hiroto, in which he said he'll divulge his feelings about her tomorrow. In the now, Hiroto jumps into the fountain to douse the flames. Your fire is no use anymore. I already understood the way it flows. Hiroto attempts to cut the vessel in the alien's brain, but he morphs into a flame. He then reconfigures behind Hiroto, squeezing down on the Gantz suit until it malfunctions. Hiroto pops a vessel in the alien's brain, but is incinerated to death shortly afterwards. The alien aims to take down Sakata, but Hiroto's powers made the alien's legs and arms not work anymore. With this opening, Sakata blows his brains to bits. Ainaba trembles in fear from all the devastation. He also feels lame for running away. Raika then appears. They're too strong! We can't win! Raika implores Ainaba to make love to her. She then says everyone else is dead, except for the two of them. They have sex, but the real Raika arrives on the scene. The fake Raika shapeshifts into the Oni alien leader. With Ainaba in his vag, the leader runs around, 
I'll eat you. Raika makes Ainaba come out of the alien, and she manages to shoot him twice. However, he absorbs the impact and runs away. Raika reunites with Korono as the two debrief each other. The others suspect this might be the shape-shifting alien, and after they shoot it four times, their suspicions are confirmed. They continue shooting until the alien morphs into Takashi and enters Masafumi's body. Unsure what to do, they urge him to throw up. Just then, a fly emerges from his back, killing him instantly. The shape-shifting alien enters Manubu and bursts through his stomach as an elephant. The elephant stampedes the area. Korono jumps down and decapitates the elephant's head, killing the alien. Takashi is scared of Kaze's brutality, saying he's not the muscle rider. Kaze convinces Takashi otherwise, saying he's come here to protect him. Kaze tells the boy to hide as he confronts the stone oni alien. The two trade punches, kicks, and nut shots. Kaze tosses the alien into a car. The alien laughs incessantly, whilst transforming into a stone form. The alien confidently confronts Kaze with a smile on his face. The alien knocks Kaze into a car. He then grabs Kaze and tosses him into a building. Ha ha ha! That was fun! They resume fighting each other, laughing the entire time. The Oni alien kisses Kaze and sends him flying with a punch. Kaze retaliates by knocking the alien down. The alien then grabs Kaze in a bear hug, but Kaze rips his arms off and sends him into a truck. The vampires are surprised by all the aliens that are dead. With 30 minutes left, Kay thinks this will be their final mission since they'll all attain 100 points. Sakata informs the group that Hiroto is dead. Kay tells everyone that once they receive 100 points, they'll have three choices, one of which being revival. Kay then thinks of Tai. The demonic Oni alien yells for the hunters to stop him. He proceeds to slice down a crowd of people, warning onlookers that if they move, they'll be killed. Kaze then steps onto the battleground. Kay and the group then run into the vampires from the dinosaur mission. The vampires walk past them nonchalantly, saying that if they survive, then they'll fight them. Izumi desperately avoids the demonic Oni alien, but it looks to be over, until the other Gantz players arrive. Believe me, we can kill you! Onlookers see the Gantz players. Just then, the timer for the mission disappears. I'm going to kill every last human in this city! Screams the alien. K slashes at the alien, but he jumps into the air. He throws a lightning bolt and proceeds to ravage the entire Gantz team. Izumi is shocked that people can see him as K continues the battle. Kaze attempts to force the alien down, but eventually takes a lightning bolt straight through the chest. K instructs him to stop the bleeding as he fiercely continues battling the alien. He thinks of Tai during the battle, which gives him the fortitude to land critical blows on the alien. Know my strength! The alien sends K flying as the others worry about him. The remaining members stare at their impossible challenge, thinking it's all over. Suzuki leads the charge, but with a shock, his suit is rendered ineffective. Sakata has his turn, but the alien punches a hole through his abdomen. Sakata places his hand on the alien's face just before falling to the ground. Raika cries as she points her X-gun at the alien. The alien's vision begins to blur, thanks to Sakata. Despite this, he grabs Raika and squeezes down on her. K leaps in and kicks the alien down. K furiously fights the alien, landing several punches in the process. Everyone in the area cheers Korono on. K rams a sword into the alien's chest, ejecting profuse amounts of blood. The alien laughs and smacks K into a bus. A little more, says K, as his suit begins to malfunction. Izumi then stands by K's side, as the two lunge in to slice off the alien's head. The hulking alien thusly collapses to the ground. It's over. Taichun, just a little longer. The crowd cheers them on as Kay wonders why they can see him. The onlookers cheer on their heroes as they slowly transport back to the Gantz room. Takshi hugs Kaze while in the room. I survived again this time, says Suzuki. The group patiently waits for Sakata, hoping he survived. What? Am I the last one? Sakata receives 105 points. He thusly chooses to revive Hiroto Sakurai. Just then, Hiroto is reborn in the Gantz room. He cries upon hearing what Sakata did for him. Izumi has 126 points, so he chooses a powerful weapon. Raika has 102 points, so she chooses to revive... Tai Kojima. Korono, you work the hardest. This way, you can become free, and you can live happily with Tai. Kei says he wants to revive his previous leader, though. Suzuki has 100 points, 
but instead of choosing freedom, he decides to revive Masaru Kato. Meanwhile, Kato has been reliving the moments just before his death. He then materializes in the Gantz room to a crying K and a group of new faces. What the hell? K tells Kato that Suzuki revived him, and Kato expresses his deepest gratitude to the old man. Kaze has 115 points. He then asks K, is there someone else you want to revive? Izumi implores him to get a powerful weapon, but Kaze chooses number three for Korono's sake. K wavers between reviving Kishimoto or Sai, but in a surprising turn of events, he chooses the despicable Nishi. K debriefs Nishi about what happened. Korono, you have some kind of ulterior motive, don't you? K tells Nishi that the rules of the game are changing, since people can see them now. Nishi recognizes Aizumi, wondering why his memory is not erased. Hoi Hoi, Takshi, and Ainaba see their point totals. Korono has 135 points, and everyone urges him to choose number one, to be free again. K sheds a tear as he chooses his freedom. He begins materializing from the room as everyone says their farewells. Thank you so much, Kei-chan, says Kado. Korono-chan, I love you. What? K wakes up in his room, thinking he's dozed off. He sees the massacre that happened at Aikabukuru and begins to laugh in a maniacal manner. He then looks at his phone and sees Tai, Raika, and the old man in his call history, wondering who these people are. The next morning, he walks past Tai on his way to school, but doesn't recognize her. The group chooses Raika as their new leader. Kaze takes Takashi with him as Kato looks for his little brother. The next day, he finds him in the street. It's been tough, hasn't it? K is at the train platform where our story began in chapter 1, and once again, he's reading a magazine with Raika on it. Kids at school say there were aliens and monsters at Aikabuku, but K doesn't seem to buy it. K finds out that Tai was missing for school for months. He then walks past Izumi in the hallway. Upon getting home, he finds pictures of himself with Tai, wondering what's going on. He aims to toss all the stuff, but begins crying when he sees a portrait of himself. Tai wonders who K is as she begins to cry. Tai's mother says she used to go out with Korono. She then bumps into him on the way to school, but he runs away. Tai talks to Korono at school, yet he calls her a stalker. Tai attempts to talk to him again, but he accidentally elbows her in the eye. Later on, Tai finds a key that fits perfectly into Korono's door. She goes inside. I know this room. Memories flood her consciousness when entering in. Tai looks to exit. I think I've got some sort of amnesia too, says Kay. The two agree to help each other out from here on. Kaze aims to find Takashi's parents, but the boy wants to stay with him instead. After finding out how the boy died, Kaze agrees to have the boy stay with him. Suzuki asks Kei for directions at the train station, and he politely does so. Kei returns to his apartment as a freelance writer confronts him. The writer tells him about the Black Ball Room website, saying his name was on it and that people are looking for him. The man shows him a photo from the incident, with his face in plain view. He begins talking about the other incidents that Kay was associated with. He then shows an image of a black ball that is worshipped in Germany. Though Kay denies all this evidence, he does mention that he's had trouble with his memory lately. Akira arrives at a fight club with some woman. Akira is coaxed into fighting by one of the girls, and he wins rather easily. The vampires then attack the girls for their blood. Akira attempts to save one, but Hikawa instructs him to fight for her freedom. After Hikawa wins, Akira finds out his brother is one of the vampire hunters. The writer arrives at the club where the vampires attack the girls. He divulges that he's got information on the Gantz team, so they let him live. Akira calls K. Brother, you better go hide somewhere now. The call disconnects, and Kikuchi, the writer, tells K that he handed over some information to an underground organization. Nishi approaches Aizumi on the train. Aizumi says when the catastrophe comes, the other teammates will be useless. Kikuchi tells Kei that the vampires are going to attack Aizumi. The vampires pull out their guns, but the two use their cloaking devices. They open fire on the passengers, but Aizumi and Nishi take care of them. Nishi, however, doesn't intend to help any further, as Aizumi cuts the entire train car in half. Kei calls Aizumi to warn him, but Aizumi says it's all over. Just then, hordes of vampires approach him. Aizumi slices them as Nishi tells Hiroto that Aizumi's being attacked right now. Hiroto calls Sakata. However, Sakata doesn't intend to help, since he's determined that Aizumi is the shooter from Shinjuku. Dead bodies are littered everywhere, as Aizumi looks to be at his limit. Haikawa and his men then approach the scene. They engage with Aizumi, finding it difficult to capture him. Aizumi's girlfriend arrives on the scene as well, seeing him in great pain. The girl jumps in the middle of the fray, 
so Izumi protects her as Hikawa's sword slashes his back. Hikawa leaves the scene. As Izumi says, I guess I'll be going to hell. Izumi embraces the girl. He then suggests they go to Disneyland together, as he lies down to quote-unquote sleep for a while. Akira calls Kei, telling him that Izumi is dead, and that he's next. Kurona wakes up the next morning, discovering that Izumi died in a violent fight. Kei and Tai talk about Izumi's death. Kei then goes to Kikuchi's place, finding out that the men already knew his address. Kikuchi informs Kei that he was previously the leader of the Gantz team, and that the people on his phone were most likely his teammates. Kei receives another call from his brother, finding out the attack will happen tonight. His brother informs him that they won't be human, and that sunlight is deadly to them. Some detectives called by Kikuchi tell Kei that he'll be safe. Kei then sets up some new fixtures in his house as a preventative measure. Kei calls Raika on his cell phone, telling her that he'll be attacked at home tonight. Raika tells him she'll send everyone over. The vampires then enter the scene, as Kei panics and hides under his sheets. He then turns on the lights, and the vampires disintegrate in an instant. What? Says Hikawa. More jump in, but they disintegrate as well. They cut the power, leaving Kei defenseless. I'm the leader of the Gantz team, screams Kei, as he shines the light on the oncoming vampires. Kei exits the apartment, shining his light on all his adversaries. Unfortunately, Hikawa holds up the severed head of his brother. Kei attacks, but Hikawa slashes his chest open. The Gantz team arrives, with Raika crying that his pulse is gone. The transfer begins with Hikawa catching a ride on Suzuki's back. Raika wants to bring Kei to the Gantz room with her, but Chiaki prevents this from happening. Kei lies on the ground, apparently dead, as Tai tries to call him. Hikawa and Chiaka wonder what they should do, while in the Gantz room. Takshi is transported first for the mission, being confronted by a strange woman. The Gantz players rush in to save Takshi, with Kato saying they should work with the vampires. Hiroto notes that Kato is more suited for the leader role than Raika. The group then finds out they're in Osaka. Hikawa sees three of the Gantz players' heads explode when they exit the perimeter. They then realize they're trapped within the game. Takshi is caught by the alien. I want to eat you! You look tasty! In fear, the boy manages to send the alien flying. The team is thrilled there's so many aliens. This will allow them to revive Korono. Strange aliens start infecting the area, with Takashi getting surrounded. The group then rushes into other people with Gantz suits on, wondering who they are. The two factions hit an impasse, pointing their X-guns at each other. Takashi fights his way through the hordes of aliens, as a massive one utters, Give back the field. This is our territory, got it? Don't you dare lay a finger on our prey, says the unknown Gantz player. Kato begs to work together with the others so they can save the people in the area. Surprisingly, the Osaka Gantz players are smoking weed and listening to music while on their mission. Terrible monsters terrorize the city, with Muscular Rider protecting Takashi. The Osaka Gantz players brutalize the aliens and even rape them. Kato stews in frustration upon seeing this, but Sakata reminds him that this stuff happens in war all the time. Kaze struggles with the massive alien as Takashi is kicked. Kaze remembers training with Takashi as he grabs the boy and dodges the alien's attacks. The alien batters Kaze as Takashi cries in fear. In the midst of the carnage, Kaze realizes that there's more to life than strength and power, i.e. protecting those you care about. He rips off the alien's head and embraces Takashi afterward. A bird alien begins slicing the Ozaka Gantz players. The man screwing the alien is attacked, but he manages to dodge and grab his gun. Another Osaka Gantz player dies, with the apparent leader ready to enter the fray. He easily obliterates the monster with his gun. Kato suggests they help the civilians in the area, but Raika says it's too risky and would put their teammates in danger. Sakata then says he's tired of repeating the same cycle of death and rebirth, and that if he dies, he doesn't want to be revived. The group then internally questions their motives for doing what they're doing. An alien then confronts the two vampires. An alien attacks some civilians, as Kato is tortured by what was said earlier. Despite this, Kato punches the alien in the face. The alien then looks to eat Kato, but he rips the mouth open, escapes, and shoots it with his capture device. Why? Why didn't you help faster? Hey, you're from the Tokyo team, says a mysterious girl. Hikawa destroys some aliens and determines something was implanted in their heads. They then identify the leaders of the aliens, high up on a building. I'm Yamasaki Anzu. Who are you? Oh, uh, Kado, Masaru. Anzu finds out that Kado isn't after strong weapons like her, but to revive someone, his best friend. 
Anzu laughs in his face and calls him a retard and a hypocrite alien. She follows him around, saying there was an old man and a kid without suits. Kato asks where they are, but she laughs in his face. Seriously? You're a freak! A huge monster appears in front of the old man. The monster captures him with his tongue, as the child is attacked by a smaller one. Just then, the Osaka Gantz players begin shooting it down. Unfortunately, they're no match for its speed. Kato then steps forward, saying he'll take it down. Anzu warns against this erratic behavior, yet Kato is resolute in his decision. Kato jumps into a building, since the walls slow down the monster's attacks. Anzu looks to shoot, but she's captured by a tentacle. Kato shoots his capture gun at the alien's face, which slowly transports him away. Kato then pulls Anzu out of the alien. You alright? Anzu begins asking Kato personal questions, finding out that he's doing this to return home to his brother. Anzu reveals that she has to stay alive for the sake of her three-year-old son. She then introduces Kato to her teammates. There's George, who's gotten 100 points three times. Nob, who's cleared the game four times. Kuwabara, who's cleared the game three times and is a sexaholic. Then there's the Sadist trio. The two chicks, Yamanaka and Yamada. Kyo, who shoots everything up. And finally, Hachiro Oka, who's gotten 100 points seven times. Hikawa and Chiaki come across two aliens. Yet the two claim they're not enemies and decide to eliminate the Gantz players together. Chiaki wonders if Hikawa would care if she died, but he says he probably wouldn't feel anything. The sadistic trio arrives, excited to have an old-fashioned sword fight. The Okai aliens begin slicing Kimura in half. The temporary alliance of the Okai aliens and the vampires finish off the other two of the trio. The female alien then cuts off Chiaki's right arm. They then attack Hikawa from both sides, yet the vampire boss proves his resilience. Hikawa then approaches the Tokyo Gantz players, finding out that Chiaki will be healed if they eliminate all the aliens. We then have a flashback of the Osaka Gantz room, prior to everyone leaving on their mission. When the mission started, the newbies died quickly. Back in the present, the scared guy with glasses thinks he's in hell. Monsters surround him, but he's eventually saved by Kyo. Kyo takes the boy with him, stating he's after a monster that's worth 100 points. The two then stumble upon an area that is infested with monsters. Kyo scans the monster point levels, finding a 68, 71, and finally, a 100-point alien. The Osaka Gantz player sends there's a 100-point alien in the area. Anzu tells Kato that Oka, the guy in stealth mode who's cleared the hunt seven times, has managed to kill a 100-pointer all by himself. Kato claims he'll kill it himself, but the Osaka girls just laugh at him. Kato is steadfast in his resolve, however, as Anzu wonders where he gets his confidence from. Meanwhile, Kyo lines up a shot on the shape-shifting alien and hits his target. The alien regenerates itself quickly and morphs into a new form to search and destroy. Kyo lands critical shots, yet the alien's rotating head eviscerates his arm and the side of his head. Nikaido walks past the deceased Kyo, pointing his gun at the alien boss. The Inugami and Tengu alien bosses then descend down. They toss his gun away, but he grabs the head of the Nurahion alien to keep him at bay. As he's chased by massive aliens, he tells himself to use the eye beams and attack, but he's too scared. Unfortunately, the monsters trip him up, leaving him vastly outnumbered. The monsters descend upon him as the military begins to open fire. The large minotaur disposes them easily, with Nikaido grabbing the head of the alien boss once more, destroying a large number of the creatures. Nikaido is then knocked out, but when he awakens, he sees the large minotaur brutalized by an invisible being. Nikaido uses the opportunity to run away, but the alien grows some arms and grabs his face. He grabs the head once more, but the military begins to shoot him. Nikaido arrives in pain until Kato picks him up. Kato claims they're with the Public Safety Commission. The soldiers don't believe them, however. The two alien bosses then intervene. They squeeze down on the soldiers as if they were toys. The soldiers open fire, but it's no use. Kato uses his capture gun on the Tengu alien, but it easily breaks out of the restraints. Things look dire. Just then, George, Nob, and Kuwabara point their guns at the bosses and eradicate them. Or so they thought. Raika is overwhelmed by the scale of the fights that they're witnessing. Despite shooting the alien bosses multiple times, they just don't seem to stay down. The Tengu alien squeezes down on Nob, causing him to panic as his suit malfunctions. Kuwabara and George don't look interested in helping him out. The alien's head explodes, yet Nob looks like he's in severe pain, dying in the process. George battles with the Inugami alien, struggling to take it down. The Inugami alien bites down on George, yet he manages to slice its head clean off. The head of the Nurahion alien reattaches itself to a body. George and Kuwabara slice it down. However, it splits off into four versions of itself. 
It then surrounds George by converging into an amalgamation of naked ladies. They eventually form a towering woman, as George's head is ejected onto the ground. Kuwabara is caught next, and is slowly absorbed into the massive creature. Nevertheless, he escapes, and he decides to screw the lady monster's face. After shooting his quote-unquote energy blast into the monster, the alien makes him come out. Despite the odds, Kato steps forward to fight the monster. Kato blows off the head and uses his capture gun on the body. The alien avoids this and begins to suck him in. Nishi uses this opportunity to blow the alien apart into black goo. It looks like it's all over, but a new, monstrous being emerges, terrifying everyone. Nishi's right arm is blown off. Kato grabs Nikato and Nishi to exit the vicinity. We then see a massive mechanized foot enter the scene. The Tokyo team discovers that the perimeter is slowly closing in, as a massive alien blocks their exit. For some unexplained reason, Suzuki's arms randomly explode. Ainaba attempts to flee the area, but he's torn to shreds. Sakata barely holds the alien back with his psychic ability, telling Hiroto not to bring him back. The giant mechanized creature from before then emerges, and it turns out to be Oka, the man who scored 100 points 7 times. Oka then begins his assault on the massive Minotaur. Though he gets knocked off his hovercraft, he latches onto the Minotaur's head, gashing him to death. He then emerges, as the Gantz team stares in awe. The Nurahion alien enters the scene, setting up the final battle. The alien uses its vibration attack like earlier, yet Oka walks straight through it. Oko then smashes the alien's jaw with a punch and slices off its head. The monster shapeshifts once more, with Oka sending several blasts through its body. Despite the impressive display of power, the Nurahion alien remains intact. None of Oko's attacks seem to work, as the alien knocks off his helmet. Oka looks to be in trouble, but sneaks behind the alien and impales him. He thusly slashes him in half. Oka walks away, saying the alien is not dead by a long shot, and that he's done fighting. A black mass of marble-like balls levitates into the air, dispersing throughout the city. Takshi was injured during the attack, causing Kaze to panic. The hulking man approaches the alien, but he is trembling with fear despite his outward facade. Kaze throws a barrage of punches, destroying the alien bit by bit. Despite this, the alien continues regenerating itself into new forms. The others help out as Kaze harnesses all his rage to obliterate the alien. However, it just doesn't end. The alien towers over Kaze. Kaze fights with all his heart, yet the alien states that he's bored. He leaves the area, with the Gantz players concocting a plan to take him out. They all assume their positions as Kato stays put. Anzu returns to him and gives him a hug. I love you. Don't die on me. Anzu makes him promise that all four of them will live together if they make it through this mission, and he agrees. Buildings begin to collapse as the alien returns with Oko in his hand. In a surprising turn of events, Kato asks the alien why they are sent here to fight against them. Do you feel the presence of God? The alien claims that God is a being of absolute power, and this world is a product of that power. The alien's arm splatters in front of Kato due to the sneak attack from the other Gantz players. They continue shooting as the alien obliterates the buildings with his laser. Kato loses his legs, yet still points his gun at the alien. Anzu intervenes. I will not let you die! Kato cries as he lines up his shot, but before he shoots, Hikawa slashes the alien with his sword. The alien continues shooting its laser, as Kato screams while he shoots his X-gun. The girls carry Kuwabara through the streets, as he's still hanging on by a thread. Mikaido cries profusely when assessing the situation. It's over. <laughs> it's really over, says Raika. Nikaido promises Kato that he'll revive Anzu for him. The survivors from the Tokyo room all look at each other, but the mood is somber. Kato is the last one to arrive, as the Gantz players express their relief. Ainaba and Raika receive zero points for the mission. Hiroto and Suzuki receive zero points as well. And Hoi Hoi gets 40 points. Takashi gets 26, Muscle Rider 35, Hikawa 42, Chiaki 0, Nishi 75, and finally, Kato receives 100 points. Suzuki implores him to choose number 1, but Kato decides to revive Kei Kurono. Kei's memory only goes back to the time when he defeated the Oni alien, and chose option number 1. Raika tells him that he was free once, but he ended up dying once again, at the hands of Hikawa. Kei-chan, we are back to square one, but this time, let's get free together. Nishi interrupts. Gant's catastrophe. Nishi suggests that the Earth will experience a nuclear war of sorts, where everything will collapse and the powerful will reclaim the land. 
They thusly have 7 days and 23 hours before the event occurs. Kado finds his brother afterward, as Kay and Tai meet in the street. Kurono cries as he embraces Tai. Kids at school discuss the recent news events, as Kurono contemplates what Nishi said in the Tokyo room. On the street, Kay runs into some old acquaintances from his middle school. Ryu, the guy, blurts out that Kay had a crush on Natsu and how he used to bully him in middle school. Ryu then calls Tai homely. Kay prepares to punch the bully, but he hesitates and gets punched himself. The Gantz team then holds a meeting, intending to interrogate Nishi about vital information. Nishi suggests that the black balls are man-made, possibly by an advanced nation. With nuclear war, the idea of power will be eradicated, and Nishi's excited about this. Later on, Kay tells Tai that there's no god, and that life must be protected by fighting till the end. Kikuchi meets with a man named Sebastian in Germany. Kikuchi then says he's heading to Mayobaha factory. When he arrives, he's led to a room of numerous, identical black balls. All the Gantz members attempt to live a peaceful last week, as Kato runs into Kishimoto on the street. Suzuki suggests that Kaze and Takashi live with him, so he's not lonely anymore. Ainaba attempts to start a relationship with Raika, but she leaves the car, thinking only of Korono. Later on, Tai says she'll come over to make some dinner, but when Kei opens the door, Raika is standing outside. Inside, Raika nervously tells Kei that she likes him. Kei, however, says that he already has Tai. Raika leaves as Tai comes in. Raika cries in the street, saying that she'll get 100 points and revive Korono again. Nishi is bullied constantly at school. During class one day, the students are asked to raise their hands if they want Nishi to leave. He laughs it off, so the students grab him and chuck him out the window. Nishi stands up. Not a single one of you better leave the room. Once returning, Nishi begins exploding all the students' heads one by one. The police arrive, as Nishi only allowed one survivor, the girl who liked him. Kei sees the incident unfold on TV, as the police open fire on the classroom window. The covert soldiers eliminate their target, but Nishi jumps up to resume his killing spree. Nishi's luck runs out as a soldier points a gun at his head. Luckily for him, however, he still got some luck left, as he teleports to the Gantz room. The room is dark, as Ainaba begins to panic, stating there's no god and no point to human life. We humans are able to take a stand, yells Kei. A cryptic message appears on the Gantz ball, as the teleportation sequence begins. They arrive in Italy, finding numerous Gantz players dead. A dying player attempts to warn them, yet they enter the fray regardless. Everyone fights valiantly, with Ainaba giving up rather easily. The scene looks horrific, with blood and entrails littered across the streets. Hiroto catches a ride with a man from Hiroshima. He claims that Gantz players from all around the world are here. Hiroto asks the man about the catastrophe, but he loses his head. Suzuki defends Ainaba, yet it's all in vain, as he loses his life. Ainaba cries about Suzuki's death, saying that he was the only person that ever cared about him. He thusly kills all the aliens in the surrounding area. Unfortunately, when he finds Kei and Kado, he gets stomped to death. Bodies are littered everywhere, yet the Gantz players are in luck, as their bodies are being teleported. Despite the premature transfer, Kei looks to save Suzuki. Everyone arrives in the Gantz room with Kei fighting on. Gantz displays random text once again, as Kei arrives in the room. Gantz then assigns Hiroto zero points, saying that he is finished. Gantz does the same for everyone else. Nishi, however, has 102 points, as everyone begs Nishi to bring Suzuki back. Give me a new weapon, right now, says Nishi. Raika has 101 points and asks Gantz to revive Suzuki. Unfortunately, the Gantz ball begins to malfunction, with Kei screaming in desperation. Everyone leaves the Gantz room, but Raika returns since she forgot her clothes. Gantz is outside the black ball, and he asks Raika what she wants revived. She eventually settles on having a copy of Kei revived. Gantz leaves the room with Raika collapsing to the ground in tears. The second Korono finds out he's a fake, so he leaves the crying Raika. The fake Korono arrives at his apartment, as the real one is walking in. With nowhere else to go, the fake Kei goes to Raika's apartment. At night, he holds her down, looking to take advantage of her, but he stops himself and walks away. The fake Kei meets with his original. The original tells him to make Raika happy, as he'll make Tai happy. At Raika's place, Kei makes love to the model. She then suggests that they get married, since the world is going to end soon. Kei receives an image of the Gantz balls in Germany from Kikuchi. Hiroto sends a text to Kei saying he received a CT scan, and there's no longer a bomb in his head. Kikuchi then arrives at President Heinz Bernstein's estate, 
He finds out that his company designed the suits and broadcasted the events all over the world for politicians, actors, and royal families. They were also betting on these events. Bernstein's daughter has a mental handicap and only speaks in numbers. Through decoding the numbers, he got his company out of debt and eventually built the black balls and placed them all around the world. They told all this information to CNN and BBC, but no one took them seriously. Kikuchi returns to his hotel, only to run outside with a gun. He meets with Sebastian outside. Sebastian suggests that Heinz's daughter was nothing more than a receiver, relaying signals from the Akasha Chronicle. Or, perhaps, they're in a simulated reality like the Matrix. Do you think that God is like a human being? What form does he take? Sebastian then speaks several tragedies into existence before he disappears, much like the Gantz players. The sky is completely blood red as Kay puts on his suit. The fake Kay says he'll fight to the end, with Nishi saying that he'll kill every last person. An American aircraft carrier is destroyed as alien aircrafts are seen destroying New York. After America is wiped out, Kay begins to sweat in a nervous panic. Kato nervously walks through the city as he runs into Nishi, who looks ready for the apocalypse. Just then, Tokyo is bombarded with unknown projectiles, and thus, for the first time, humanity knows despair. The mechanized creatures begin destroying everything in sight. Nishi coyly smiles as he activates the cloaking device on his Gantz suit. The complete and utter devastation continues, yet this is only the beginning of the annihilation. The creatures infect the entire world, destroying everything in their path. Hiroto and Tankotsuku see some civilians put their hands up to surrender, but they are eviscerated with no remorse. Kei escapes with Tai, but are confronted by a gigantic, mechanized creature. It truly looks like hell on earth at this point. Hiroto and Tankotsuku run away in desperation. A small boy uses a telescope. He then sees several aliens inside the ship, laughing and taking joy in the devastation. Despite all this, Kei nervously laughs in the face of danger, saying he'll fight to the very end. Kei uses his gun to eliminate the mechanized creature, but just then, a human-like creature emerges from the suit. Kay eliminates the creature as another one shoots an electrical blast their way. Kay then runs away with Tai as the two get chased. A lightning bolt forces him to drop her. He then confronts the towering beast, as Kato does his best to protect his brother. In the face of impossible odds, the fake Kay claims he'll fight through this ordeal, and what's more, he'll survive it. Kato and Muscle Rider do their best against the monsters. A mysterious being then begins to observe Kurono, looking to take aim on his life. Corono's classmates demand to know what's happening, as Kei exits with Tai. After destroying some monsters, Kei and Rika agree to check out the Gantz apartment. Large, armored monsters tear up the citizens in the area. Rika saves a small child. Corono! I won't die! yells Rika. Just then, mysterious Gantz members unexpectedly gather in the Tokyo area. Unfortunately, the monsters begin exploding them with electrical attacks. The remaining Gantz players finish them off. Kei says that when it's night, they'll all go back to their stronghold, which will give them time to rest. There is no such thing as God. A man's life is a very tiny thing. That's how it is. Even if God existed, I'm sure that he isn't a compassionate and friendly being. People use the opportunity to call their parents and family members. Kay and Tai find a room together, wondering what will happen next. Tai wants to check in on her mom, but Kay won't allow her to leave on her own. Tai mentions how Kei has grown up as the two fall asleep in each other's arms. A large explosion wakes everyone up. Kei runs to the door, but he begins to transport as Tai screams. Kei arrives in a mysterious location with Kato and the other Gantz players. The crew reconvenes as everyone is surprised by the second Corono. We are about to send all of you on a raid into the very midst of the enemy territory, says an unknown Gantz player. These people have control of the Gantz balls and have implanted bombs inside of everyone's heads, so they must obey. We want as many of you to return as possible. The players are then sent to an unknown town where they look like toys compared to the inhabitants. A Gantz member blows off one of their heads, claiming this is the center of the enemy aircraft. Catastrophe, therefore, is a war against the aliens. The aliens then send in their military. The Gantz players thusly have no choice but to fight for survival. Tai cries as she walks out of the room and sees the devastation. A high-level soldier then descends downward, along with several others. The battle begins, with Hiroto losing both of his arms. Things intensify as Kurono comes face to face with the apparent leader. Things are at peak craziness, with explosions and dead bodies flying everywhere. Kei is instructed to run away, but he takes on the challenge nonetheless. Hiroto speaks to Raika, as the leading Gantz player says to start the transference. The two Ks look to attack simultaneously, but then they're transported. 
In the process, the others manage to capture a hostage. Hiroto's arms are back to normal. The group is then dissolved, but they will be reconvened by force. Unfortunately, they're all transferred to different locations from where they previously were. Tai finds Kei's apartment in a blaze. Same with her parents' place. She eventually finds a pile of dead bodies, with her mother pretending to be dead. However, Tai's mother gets shot as a girl is captured in a cage. Tai Chun! I swear I'm gonna save you! Kei attempts to follow the craft, but it's no use. Hiroto finds Tankotsu, who is bleeding out on the street. Kei climbs onto a building and jumps onto the craft. He then tries punching a hole through it, but falls off the craft onto a nearby building. The craft is taken into an area where the aliens begin to spray it. The chemical then dissolves their clothing. The group then waits in waist-high water, thinking they are prisoners of war. Unfortunately, the water begins to rise, as they notice dead people hanging upside down, that are bleeding from their chest. Tai desperately swims away, and into the arms of a man who helps her out the water. The two navigate their way through several obstacles, eventually reaching a large shaft. We then see Kei inside the ship, being sprayed down just like Tai was. Tai then asks the man why he saved her, and he admits that he's a lowly con. When Kei sees the upside down bodies, he thinks the worst has happened to Tai Chun. Kei then escapes the water, as Tai's group is attacked by insects. Tai and the old man reach safety with a few others. They climb up a ladder and enter the city. After the inhabitants gawk at them, they come across a person's pet who is eating a plate of cooked humans. The majority of them get captured, as Tai stares on in horror. Tai and the older man run away, as Kei enters the city for himself. The older man says that Tai reminds him of his daughter, as he passes away. A childlike alien grabs Tai, as if she was a doll. Kei nearly tracks down Tai's screams, but the girl covers her mouth as he loses her in the crowd. Thugs on the street begin crushing humans, with Kei slicing them up. Kei and the humans are forced to flee when the authorities intervene. A man tells Kei that a small girl took Tai away, just before his head gets blown off. Kei then reaches a zoo with numerous, grotesque monsters. They eventually make their way to the human exhibit. Ryu and Natsu are inside, wondering how Kei is on the other side. Kei walks away at first, but eventually returns to share the glass with his ex-gun. He then leads the charge through the city. The small girl places Tai inside of an animal exhibit, with a boy already inside. His name is Nakagawa, and he's 14 years old. An enemy soldier looks to eliminate Kei, but Kurono slices off the side of his face. Kei then jumps on a lady's shoulder. You'll go where I tell you. Nakagawa shows Tai the food supply, but she immediately pukes it out. The giant woman uses a translator to communicate with Kei. Raika, Kei, Kato, Muscle Rider, and Takshi return to the Tokyo Gantz Ball. While sleeping, Nakagawa leans over Tai. Hiroto vows revenge on the creatures that killed Tankotsu. He then comes across two aliens as they snack on dead humans. The men use electrical blast, yet Hiroto puts up a shield. You bastards! I'll kill you all! Hiroto uses his psychic ability to tear one of the soldiers to shreds. Kei tells the lady that he plans on stealing one of the black mechanized suits. The small girl grabs Nakagawa, possibly telling him to stop raping Tai. In the Tokyo room, Nishi reveals himself to the other members. They want to turn on Gantz, but he opens up the hatch and says, Tell me what you guys want. I'll do anything in my ability. We want you to take out the bombs in our heads. Gantz removes the bombs as instructed. Nishi says the Gantz members that transported them earlier were Japanese bigwigs, and they're looking to destroy the giants so they can become the new rulers of the Earth. Kei uses the Gantz ball to send out a message to all the teams in Japan, expressing his wish to save the people inside the ship. A long-haired man, Takeda, accepts the terms and teleports in. Tai panics as Nakagawa's face develops a rash. Mishima arrives next in the Tokyo room. The lady Kei's riding approaches a soldier. She turns off her translator and tells him she's being held hostage. Kei is then surrounded. Mary McLean then arrives in the Gantz room. The small girl decides to sleep with Tai for the night. In the meantime, Kei has no choice, so he has to fight his way out. I'm Sakina Makoto from Kyoto. Yoshikawa Kaiji here, 25 years old. After killing all the guards, Kei tells the woman to put on one of the suits. George Clooney arrives in the Gantz room next. Come on, dance! God damn it! Let it go! <laughs> Nakagawa's health is deteriorating as Tai warms him up with her body heat. Nikaido then transports to the Gantz room. Nikaido cries as he tells Kato that he kept his promise. Anzu then teleports to the Gantz room as Kato expresses his deepest gratitude. The woman tells Kei that their star system was destroyed long ago 
and that many planets have been sending their immigrants to Earth. Yoshikawa then conveys that people can't be healed anymore or brought back to life by Gantz. Despite this, no one decides to back out of the mission. Eva Gund, the war god, had his brother killed by Kay. Therefore, Kay is public enemy number one. Meanwhile, Tai climbs out of her holding container. The Tokyo team contacts an American Gantz player, who gives them a map to the alien ship. Alright, let's get moving. Gantz starts transporting the members into the alien ship, as they help out as many people as they can. Gantz transfers the people back to the Earth's surface. Tai gets caught by one of the aliens, who begins to inspect her in an odd fashion. The woman alien calls Kay an insect and a fool for being weak. More people are saved, as Natsu has to go with Korono. Meanwhile, Raika saves a boy in the water, with Kay saying they've stopped the water flow. Natsu makes a scene with Korono, and while people initially take her side, they come to their senses and thank Kay for his bravery. Tai gets tossed out of the house as she runs for her freedom. After saving all those people, the Gantz men in the ship decide to take a piss break. Cause, you know, guys gotta be guys! <laughs> Meanwhile, as internet and cable returns, people see a broadcast in which humanity has struck a peace deal with the aliens. However, Gantz players are cited as terrorists, according to the news report. Tai falls while running in the streets, as a group of kids peer down on her. As the Gantz players save more people, a giant creature bursts through the wall. The X-Guns are rendered ineffective, so the crew is forced to use their swords. Some soldiers save Tai from the children. Hiroto arrives on the ship in a cage, but finds some men disinfecting the humans on the ground, presumably dead. He makes his way to the main city, finding a woman with her grandchild. Though he's still seething with rage, he ends up breaking down in tears. The Gantz team continues helping the refugees, as Kay and the group find out they're being labeled terrorists. Despite Hirota's initial reservations, he begins slaughtering the citizens in the city, though the gravity of the situation weighs down on him heavily. The soldiers take Tai to a group of refugees, who scavenge scraps around the city. Nishi finds out the spacecraft's weak point through intel gathered by the Americans. Unfortunately, Gantz is hacked, and space creatures arrive in the Tokyo room. One of the creatures blows themselves up, leaving Takashi injured. The group finds out something is wrong, so Kazi demands Gantz to transport Takashi onto the ship. Takashi screams for Muscle Rider, but then we see a big explosion. The Gantz players are then transported to an undisclosed location. Nishi lands on the street with Takashi in his hands, wondering why he is doing this. Nishi then desperately searches for Gantz, finding him with his head cracked open. Gantz players are still stuck in the spacecraft, as the female alien is taking Kei to her apartment. Tai's party, hungry for food, runs into a trap. The aliens apprehend one of them with a capture device. They begin running, but Tai is shot through the leg. The Gantz players arrive at a refugee camp, with insects infesting the entire ceiling. The lady alien begins to help Kay find Tai, whilst the girl sees another person get dragged away. She's then pulled in, as she sees the aliens pull off the head of another person. The aliens pull the hook out of Tai's leg and drops her to the ground. She then hobbles down the street as she cries. Kay and the female alien then locate Tai's body. The Gantz team then comes across a garbage barge of human bodies that contain various Gantz members. Turns out, other Gantz teams were saving people just like the Tokyo team, but they were wiped out. The aliens broadcast the egregious events on live TV for entertainment purposes. Even when things go well for the humans, they run into more arduous obstacles. Nikaido and Anzu do their best to protect the defenseless humans, but the odds are not in their favor. Anzu instructs Nikaido to find Kado and the others. The humans are then infected with lights that make smaller versions of themselves rip themselves out of their own bodies. The Gantz players are not spared from this cruel fate. With no other options, the Gantz players have to fight their infected teammates. The alien citizens howl in laughter as the Gantz players are pitted against one another. Corono's dad is ashamed to see that his son is labeled as a terrorist leader. Despite this, an anonymous person on the internet claims that Kei Corono is humanity's only hope, and that everything on TV is a lie. Skeletal-like creatures attack the Gantz players. The X-Guns don't have any effect on these creatures, as Kei runs in with his swords. Unfortunately, their speed is lightning quick, making some of the other Gantz players think it's all over. Don't give up! We can't give in! They find out the back of the creature's necks is their weak point, as the Gantz team's vigor returns. The onlooking aliens are shocked by this development, as it looks like the tide is turning. 
Do you intend to wipe us out? Says the female alien. Kay doesn't answer, as the two finally converge on Ty's location. Kay thanks the female alien for her assistance. She then acknowledges that the two species are one and the same. Tears stream down Korono's face as he approaches Ty. Anzu and Nikaido stare down an impossible challenge as Anzu says her farewells. Just then, Kato lunges in and slices through the alien. Kay and Ty finally embrace each other, with tears spilling out of their eyes. Kay introduces Ty to the female alien that helped him as he peers up at the TV monitor. George Clooney, i.e. Yazawa, comforts Nikaido as the Gantz team fights on with all their fortitude. The female alien offers to take Tai and Kay back to the surface. Unfortunately, Kay is transported in front of Tai's eyes once again. Kay arrives in an unknown location inside of a massive robot, tasked with the responsibility of destroying a tower-like facility. The robots begin their mission, with Kay crying for Tai. When the enemy launches their counter-strike, Kay has no choice but to enter battle mode. Meanwhile, the Tokyo Gantz team destroys their adversary, with Kato embracing Anzu. Another enemy appears, as Kay looks poised to kill it. Nevertheless, the others are reluctant, saying they should evacuate while they have the chance. But Kay says he'll kill it, all by himself. The others leave as Kay prepares himself for the impossible battle. Kay's gun explodes in his hands. He then begins to laugh nervously as there are swarms of monsters. Raika worries about Kay, thinking she should go back. But Takeda warns against such erratic behavior. If Kei Chun dies, then I die with him. Raika henceforth runs back to Kei. Korono is levitated upside down by the alien, but he comes crashing down to the ground when Raika enters the scene. Despite her best efforts, however, Raika gets knocked out. I'll do this. Don't get in my way. I wish I could have seen Tai Chun one more time. Kei starts gashing the monster, harnessing all his rage to lop off the head. He passes out afterwards, yet the creature still remains. It's now Raika's turn again. When Kei reawakens, he finds the monster dead. His suit malfunctions as he makes his way over to Raika. She appears to be dead, so Kei desperately performs CPR on her, whilst crying the entire time. He admits his love to the girl, as he kisses her on the lips. He then carries her body out of the battlefield. Kei returns to his teammates, as they all break down by what they are seeing. The other Kei continues fighting in his gigantic robot, but the aliens continue sending more and more adversaries. Nishi plans on entering the battlefield himself via a remote control. Nishi then teleports away from Takashi and enters the main alien city. While inside of a robot, Hiroto states, They need to die. All of them. I'll be their butcher. I'll be their destroyer. After destroying several opponents, Hiroto is ejected from the controls. Sup, Cherry? Says Sakata. Hiroto then sees Tankotsu, immediately falling into her arms. Hiroto says he still needs to slaughter the aliens, but Tankotsu and Sakata say he's done enough. Hiroto shoes away the vision, takes the bomb out of his head, and throws it away. The Gantz players reach the shore, making their way to the tower as the rich aristocrats watch their every move. In an instant, the robots are shot down with the gigantic cannons. Kei witnesses the devastation firsthand. During the commotion, the alien woman flies over Kei's robot as Tai looks down upon him. Nishi's confidence doesn't waver in the face of the alien's ultimate weapon. Just then, the aristocrats are hacked, with Hiroto claiming he's stronger than anything. Unfortunately, the boy loses his arms and legs to an enemy blast. Hiroto wishes for two alien kids to die. Sakata and Tankotsu then arrive, saying he should come with them. Before he dies, however, he uses his psychic abilities to prevent the debris from killing the alien children. Kei exits the robots in an aircraft. Regrettably, Tai's ship gets shot down by one of the enemies. The female alien burst out of the ship, with Tai in her arms. Please don't kill us. She throws Tai as Kei catches her. Nishi finally reaches the tower. Checkmate, suckers! Ha 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 ha! Tai begs Kei not to destroy the facility, claiming they are just alike. Nishi throws a barrage of punches at the tower, with Korono meeting him face to face. We then transition to Nishi's father, finding out that his son was always rotten, killing cats for fun just because he could. The massive alien ship then begins to lift off, with Kei and Nishi fighting one on one. Nishi says that after he crushes Kei, he'll become the most powerful man in the world. Nishi prepares an energy blast, but instead of shooting Korono, he blows up Tai. Kei is heartbroken as Nishi laughs sadistically in his face. Nishi hits Kei with a blast, but due to Kei's rage, he's able to destroy Nishi's suit. He then stands over the vile man. Gantz can still revive the girl. Wanna know how? Says Nishi. As long as Kei obeys Nishi, he'll bring back Tai. 
Nishi, henceforth, tells him to blow up the facility, yet Kei can't get the words Tai spoke out of his mind. He's thusly at a crossroads. Kei punches the tower anyway. Just then, he hears Tai's voice. He rescues her with the flying craft and leaves Nishi alone without a means to escape. Let's go home, says Kei. Kurono! You won't get away with this, you fucking asshole! Nishi requests to be transferred back to the surface, yet there's no response. The scared boy thusly spends his final moments crying for his mother's solace. As Kay and Ty reach the exit point, they find out they're in outer space. They make their descent down to Earth, as Kay says, Tai Chun, we made it. When Kay and Ty return to the Earth's surface, the people still think Kay is the lead terrorist. Kikuchi arrives on television, stating that all the information they heard previously was propaganda, and that humankind has thwarted the alien invasion. As Kaido and the team leave the last of the refugees, they get a call saying the Americans are making their last push on the mother ship. Though they're reluctant, they decide to transport onto the mother ship to help out. Upon transporting onto the ship, Nikaido's leg is healed. The aliens on the ship are naked and being held hostage by the Gantz players. After finding out Kaze is a virgin, Mary McLean hugs him and says they're just alike. They find some Gantz players who are looking for the truth of the universe. The Tokyo team is transported to a room with two cryptic beings that have their arms opened up. Everyone's eyes begin to bleed when they stare at this phenomenon. Kikuchi informs them that this is the room of truth. The being answers any question that they pose to it. Kei and Kato ask why they were forced to fight. Immigrants began arriving on Earth 30 years ago, the last of which being a supremely powerful race of giants. These giants, however, attempted to inhabit these creatures' planets first, but they drove them off. When the giants went to Earth, these beings sent a signal containing technology to Earth to fight said aliens. However, only the technology was sent to Earth. The game-like aspects were added by humans on their own accord, and the guys living inside the balls were a copy of a randomly selected human. The god aliens, however, did not do this out of sympathy for the humans. They state that human life is inconsequential. The so-called god you cling to does not exist. Human life is but dust and detritus. The humans in the room are in disbelief at what they are hearing. Corono claims they are wrong, saying human life has value. The alien gods then show the humans how inconsequential their lives are. They reconfigure themselves into Raika, Suzuki, Kishimoto, and Sai right before their eyes. Sai immediately hugs Kei, as Raika wonders who this is. Sai cries, realizing that she's now out of the picture. Suzuki embraces Kei, as Raika cries in Kei's presence. Now we shall prove that human beings are merely things. Kei panics. Raika! Raika! I love you! In an instant, the revived people disappear. Now you understand humans are no more than things. Kei lunges forward in rage, but the alien god explodes him in midair. Kato rushes forward next, but his teammates tackle him down. The alien god says that when humans die, approximately 21 grams of data detaches and migrates to a separate dimension. The data then re-enters this dimension within a new dimension, creating a cycle of reincarnation, death, and rebirth. The discussion is concluded as everyone is sent back to their original location. The black balls begin to malfunction, meaning everyone is stuck indefinitely on the ship. Ryu tells Kei that he's amazing for saving Tai. Kei then stares at Tai affectionately. The Americans battle the giant aliens on the ship, with Eva Gund stepping forward. The Gantz players put up resistance, yet Gund is too strong. Gund continues his onslaught as the people on Earth watch on. Kei Korono, where are you? Come and face me, Kei Korono. I swear to you, I'll be back. Kei is transferred to the ship as Tai can do nothing more than cry. The final battle thusly begins. Everyone cheers Kei on as he battles humanity's greatest threat. Kei's dad cheers his son on as Kei raises his sword high into the air. Unfortunately, Kei finds himself in an inferior position. Meishima intervenes, saving Kei for the moment. Meishima is gashed open as Yoshikawa slices into Gund. Meishima passes away as Kei cries over his body. The remaining Gantz players offer a hand. Despite this, Yoshikawa gets sliced in half. Nikaido and George Clooney are gashed next, as humanity begins to lose hope. Kaido tells the others to transfer Anzu to Osaka, as he runs after Gund. Kei is seething with rage, as he rushes in like a speeding bullet. Gund is sent flying back, crashing into the ground. Live video footage shows Gund's brain matter spilling out of the back of his head. People all across the world cheer in celebration. Despite this, one of the giant aliens starts the self-destruct sequence on the ship. They transfer the dead and wounded back on Earth. But when an explosion happens, 
Kato and Kay are forced to board an alien hovercraft. They exit the mothership, flying it back to Earth's surface. After landing in the water, the two eventually see the coast. They slowly trudge their way to the beach. Kay collapses into the arms of Tai, as Kato collapses into his brother's arms. The crowd then cheers on their saviors, as Kay and Tai look to finally be at peace. Now that you've watched the complete manga timeline, and you know everything that happens, there's a couple ways you can go with this. Now there is a Gantz anime that came out in 2004. It's a 24 episode anime that was split off into two seasons. And I gotta tell you guys, it's not the greatest. K. Corono is overly sexualized and overly a deviant, even more so than the manga. Like in the manga, yeah, he was kind of vile in the beginning, but he developed redeemable qualities as it went on. In the anime, they never really get to the point where he becomes likable or relatable. So as the viewer, it's kind of like, uh, he's kind of this asshole character. Uh, the animation is not the greatest either. And of course, they throw in some filler stuff as well. So it's just not the greatest adaptation in the world. Now, there is a film that came out in 2016 called Gantz Zero. And I gotta say, this is actually pretty damn good. It's a CGI-based film. And I gotta say, the graphics are just utterly amazing. Like, even if you don't get into the story or the plot or the character development... Just the visual splendor is something to behold. If they did something like had a five or six set DVD set going through the various mission arcs in movie format CGI, I would absolutely love that. I feel like that might be the best way to go with this. Because we've seen so many manga that have attempted to make anime versions and have just failed miserably. I mean, look no further than Berserk. I mean, the 2016 and 2017 versions are just atrocious. Vagabond doesn't even have an anime adaptation. So maybe the CGI movies is not a bad choice. Now, if you're looking for more Gantz related manga material, there are some spin-offs. There's Gantz G and Gantz E. Now, Gantz E is a little bit surprising and something that I might take a look into myself. This one actually features Feudal Japan. Now, that's kind of interesting because you have the sci-fi elements, but then you also have the old world charm. So that might be one I take a look into myself as well. But yeah, guys, that's all I got for you guys. Thanks for watching the complete Gantz timeline. If you guys haven't already, please subscribe, like, comment, and share this video with others. But until next time, I'll catch you guys on the flip side.